Still at work. It's too late. Okay. Welcome to today's lessons about simplifying radical expressions. Um, radicals are another word for a square root. So, might as well write that down. Um, your homework today is to do all the circled problems on this worksheet, which is 14 of them. So I thought that instead of doing like a normal lesson with you where I would do examples, then you do the homework, that maybe I would try just doing the homework with you. Um, I'm not going to do all of them, but I think I'll pick like four that we'll do together, and then your homework is to do the rest, at least the rest of the circled ones. So. Um, I'm pretty sure that you did this with Mr. Thorson, but just in case you don't remember. To simplify a radical or a square root, um, you could, I mean, it'd be very easy if the square root of 216 was a whole number, but it's not. So we've got to take out what we can. Um, so we're going to break it down into two things that go into 216. Hmm. Well, I remember that um, 6 goes into 216, or at least I took a guess that it did, um, and proved it on my calculator. So then I've got this now, okay? So I'm in, and I'm ignoring that V for right now. So this is really like the square root of 6 times the square root of 36. So if you end up with a perfect square at any point, because remember the square root of 6 times the square root of 36, you can just multiply the insides and get the square root of 216. Um, so since this is the square root of 36, that, the square root of 36 is 6. So technically, the square root of 216 is the same thing as 6 times the square root of 6. And I can prove that because of my calculator. Here is the square root of 216. What, 14.696. And then if I take 6 times the square root of 36, oops, 6 times the square root of 6. I get also that 14.696 thing. Okay, so um, basically you break it down into things that multiply into that. You look for perfect squares, and then perfect squares equal this. Now, let's say that you didn't realize um, that this was a perfect square, and so you just kept going. So you're like, okay, so we've got the square root of 216, and I break that down into 6 and 36, and then I break those down to 6 and 6, and then each one of those can be break in, broken down to um, 2 and 3s. So maybe you just went all the way, right? You completely broke this down as far as you possibly could. All right, if that's the case, um, then you start circling pairs because this is a square root. So here I've got a pair of 3s, and you're only looking at that bottom line here. And here I've got a pair of 2s. So on the outside goes all of your things that you have pairs of. So that'd be 2 times 3. And on the inside, inside the square root, is the stuff that's left over, which is, let's see, I got 1, 3 left and 1, 2 left. Notice that when I put the pairs on the outside, I only used one of each. Um, and that makes 6 square root of 6. So it, it doesn't matter. If, it's probably easiest to try to break it down into something with a perfect square involved. Um, but if you break it down all the way, you can still look for pairs and put those, one of them each on the outside and put the leftovers on the inside and it does still work. Now the V, if it was a V squared, then the square root would undo it because a square root is the opposite of squaring something. Um, so this, the V just stays inside essentially. So this is the answer to this problem. Okay, that was messy. Let's try another one. Let's try 10. All right, so I'm going to try to break it down, and I'm going to try to break it down to perfect squares. Um, let's see, I've got 102. That's pretty easy. All right, so I'm going to think about this as the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. The square root of 2 can't be broken down any further, but the square root of 100 is 10. So this is 10 times the square root of 2. Okay, now I've got one N, and I'm going to keep that on the inside because there's not two of them. And I've got four M's. So it's basically I've got like two pairs of M's. So 
there'll be an M on the outside and another M on the outside because I had four of them. So like if I was to break down M to the fourth, I would say, ooh, well that's M squared times M squared, which are perfect squares. You can think about it that way. And so the square root of M squared is just M. So the answer for this one is 10 M squared, square root of 2N. So all those leftovers go in the inside, like 2 didn't have a pair and N didn't have a pair. They were just sitting by themselves. Um, so that's how that works. Let's say you broke it down in a different way. Let's say that you said instead, oh, but 200 is technically 25 times 8. Because 25 is a perfect square, too. That's a great idea. So awesome. So that's 5. But remember that 8 can be broken down to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is 2. So this would be 5 times 2 times the square root of 2, which is 10 times the square root of 2, which is what we ended up with as far as the numbers go. So, so the answer for that one is 10m squared times the square root of 2n. That's how you break down radicals. All right, let's flip it over, try something on the other side. Let's try 17. All right, this is absolutely no different than it was before. Um, the only, only difference is that um, there's a number on the outside now. So that's just a number that's already there, and let's ignore it till the end. So if I break down 96, let's see, that'd be 6 times, if I put it in my calculator, 16. That's beautiful. I know that 6 can only be broken down to a 2 and a 3, so that's not going to help, but this is a perfect square. So this is like the square root of 6 times the square root of 16, which is, what, 4 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 6 is left on the inside. That's the stuff I can't break up. If I take out um, for m to the third, I can break that down into an m times m squared, and m squared is a perfect square. So I'm going to pull an m out. So that's 4m times the square root of 6m. That's the leftover, the garbage stuff. The leftover stuff is this one and this one. <clears throat> but also there was that 7 out front, so really this is like 7 times this stuff. So my answer is 28m square root of 6m. All right, let's try a tough one now. Let's try 25. All right, we're breaking down. Didn't we do 216 already? Yeah, we did. Let's not do the 25 because we've already done that one already. Let's try 29. All right, so if I'm breaking down 75, I'm going to break that down into probably 25 times 3 because I know that's a perfect square. All right, so the square root of 25 is 5. So that's 5 times the square root of 3. And then m is going to stay on the inside because that's just by itself. p squared, that means the square root of p squared is just p, so I'll put that on the outside. Um, q to the third can be broken down into 1q and q squared, so I'm going to put 1q on the outside and 1q on the inside. That's the inside one. Um, this is a perfect square, so that stuff goes on the outside. And then I'm going to multiply it by that 6 that's left over there. So my final answer it's 6 times 5, which is 30. PQ, I'm just putting it in alphabetical order, but you don't have to, times the square root of 3MQ. Really hope this is a review and that you learned this last year, but if it's not, then we just talked about how to simplify radicals, how to simplify square roots. Basically, you just break them down as far as you can and look for perfect squares, even if it's a variable. Okay. So it's your job to do the rest of the circled problems. And remember, this assignment and the assignment that I gave you yesterday, which was page 92, numbers 12 through 48, multiples of 4, both of those are due on Friday. Bye.